up? It's the boy Dane, representing Play Too Much CMG Def Jam Records, and you tuned in to All Bay Magazine. Yeah. All right, man, we got the boy Dame here. Thank you for showing up and giving us an interview, man. We appreciate you. It's all good, bro. What happened? You know what I'm saying? So let's let's kick it off. Uh, wh what made you start up being a DJ? Like, when did you start being a DJ? Um, I think I started being a DJ around my internship at KMU. Um, after the morning shows, I used to, like, go into uh, my emotion in them DJ room. And I used to kind of, like, just play around and be making fun of, like, this what DJ is supposed to be doing. And uh, him and Chewy was basically, like, if you're going to do that, you need to learn how to actually do it. So they kind of forced me to learn how to be a DJ. And, uh, like, after every show, they would make me do, like, 30 to 45 minutes of practicing how to DJ. So I say, like... I don't know, maybe it was about 10 years ago, maybe 10, 11 years ago. That's when I probably started. Gotcha. So you literally you literally learned at Cameo headquarters. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know shit about <laughs> DJing outside of, like, nothing. I just knew how to, like, they had to teach me how to do the Serato and move to something. I didn't know none of that shit. That's tight. I didn't know about BPMs or nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh. That's tight. Um... So the boy Dame, how, how did how did that name come about? Is that like always been with you? Yeah, nah, uh, always been there. So I grew up in West Oakland. So, um, but I always been big on just everybody music. And Jay Z, my favorite rapper of all time. And um, one day I just came out the house rapping Jay Z, and 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 the big homie was just like, like, hey, I ain't think you from New York, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, What you think you is the boy Dame? Cause you know. Jay used to call himself it's your boy Hov. So they just start calling me the boy Dane. Okay, okay. Neighborhood nickname, right? I didn't get that shit to myself. I know niggas be out here giving names. <laughs> Except they <laughs> nicknames. I just was giving it to me. Gotcha. So, all right, you got to KMEO. How long were you at KMEO? So I probably was like at KMEO like four to five years. But I was an intern. I never was hired at KMEO. Mm -hmm. I, I just didn't treat myself like an intern. So, People thought that I was actually like working at KML, but I was really just an intern the whole time. So you were um, strong marketing the fact that you was at the station. Um, I mean, so Chewy would like put me on air, right? And Big Vine and then would throw me on air sometime on his show. But when it came to the morning show, like that was my personality. Like I was considered Dame the intern when I first started there. So Chewy would let me crack the mic. Um. You know, it could be anything like what's going on in the streets or you got a question type thing. And um, people just thought that was an actual like position that I had of like, oh, he an on-air personality. But nah, I was still like getting there in the morning, going to get Chewy, his Coca-Cola, breakfast burrito, researching artists and everything. But I just didn't let people treat me like an intern. You know what I'm saying? So I guess maybe the energy just projected out to everybody else of like, dude his own 106 KML instead of like he's just an intern. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. What would you say are some of the things that you accomplished while you were at KML? Obviously you learned how to DJ. Sounds like there's a long list of things. Yeah, nah, I just learned music business. I learned like music politics. Um, I learned about just um, structure of music. I learned how like certain music represents certain phases of somebody's day. Um, you know, like the morning show probably wasn't gonna play you the new Gucci man. You know what I'm saying? Like, but the evening show wasn't gonna be playing a bunch of Alicia Keys or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, they just taught me how like music relates with people at certain times of the day. And um, so outside of just learning that, um, something I guess what I did, like I, I broke R.O.D. Like, I can't stand you on the radio. Huh. Um, I was like part of the collection of helping like the HBK, like I am Sue and all them Pilo do the up record. Um, and I would like take them to their first club, they first 21 and up clubs. Um, just stuff like that. Or, you know, I, I, I helped put together like they was actually my blood cousins, but uh, the NHT boys was like my first rap group. And uh, we did six in the morning, which was like hot in the streets and on the radio. And um, yeah, 
forget just stuff like that. Like as as an intern, I was literally doing stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So you were breaking artists through the platform. Yeah, yeah. That's funny because um, well, we have two backstories on two of those artists. Uh, Rod. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was his hit record? I can't stand you. Yeah, so that one, uh, that's one of our top performance songs on YouTube. Mm. And then uh, the NHT boys, they made our Oakland top 20 list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they got one of the highest played songs out of any Oakland yep. yeah, out of any Oakland artists on YouTube. Oh, that's so, if you, yeah, what we did, we did a, a list and we basically were like, look, like, if an artist's been on a song... That has X amount of million, you're you're in the race. Yeah. So NHT Boys was like top ten. You know, on YouTube on YouTube. But just, still. Like it's crazy because like these are my blood cousins, these are my auntie sons. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like we grew up our whole lives. So um we were just talking about that kind of recently of like if we could have caught like ten years later, if we mm-hmm. was like born you know what I'm saying, right. to when we was twenty one, twenty two today, now, right. we probably would have went. Crazy, crazy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. not saying like the same level of thing, but like when I seen the Migos, I was in my head, I was like, and then she was like the Oakland. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they was just on some street. Yeah. But like we, it was funny. Like I used to use my emotion and Big Vine and them advice, and and then like go back to NHC boys and like tell them shit. Right. So that's how we like got six in the morning and all that. But like. Eventually, I start just telling them shit, but lying and saying, like, yo, my emotions said do this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, a lot of those things is, like, my first, like, mm-hmm. ideas as A&R. Like, right. you know, 6 in the morning was the Ice T record. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. uh, we flipped a bunch of different songs, Outstanding, all the, like, classic songs that we would, like, sample. Like, those are my first, you know, those are my first, like, niche at like trying to run something gotcha yeah so eventually you left came yell mm-hmm. and when you did what was next so i, I really left came yell because i realized like these niggas wasn't leaving you know there's only four spots on radio you know it's your morning show your uh midday afternoon and then night shift and um they all four hours each and like these people getting paid a lot of money to work for four hours a day. You know what I'm saying? So like, why would you leave? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm 21, 22 years old and I'm seeing like Chewy at the time might've been in his forties, Vine might've been in his thirties, Sana's in her thirties. Like, and these people's already on the radio for like 10 years before I even got there. And I'm, you know, people got kids, bills, whatever, businesses. Like, who would quit a four-hour job a day and you make it six figures? Like, it don't make sense. Yeah. So I was like, yo, I got to find a way to transition. And um, Kim Yale was going through transitions, too, with they, like, the new bosses and everything like that. So, of course, people was coming in. They picking their favorite stuff like that. And uh, I came across Gotti because I just used to be the extracurricular guy at the radio station. You know what I'm saying? Like, if something was needed, you know what I'm saying? Like, call, dang. So, in that, I was building relationships with artists on my own. But um, I was, like, telling the artists, like, this song is hot. It was really me picking the song, though. And, and I'm telling them, like, yo, Vine fuck with this song. My emotion fuck with this song. But it was really just me and, and, and God willing, the song just started to crack. So, I built my relationships from the extracurricular shit, picking out their music. So one day Gotti came in town and it was the same little situation of like showing at the radio fuck with you and all that. And um, he just took a liking into me, invited me to the studio one day. Um, I, the studio was in LA, you know, everybody think the Bay in LA is so close. Yeah. So he just like, oh, we in Cali, come to the studio. I'm like, yeah, text it, take me to the studio. That shit was like in Hollywood, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just jumped in the whip and drove to Hollywood by myself. You know right. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Went there, and we did act right that night. And then from there, he was like, I need you to be with me, period. And I was just so happy to get out of radio, so it all kind of made sense. I always felt like the Bay had a lot to do with Yo Gotti's success from that record. Because mm-hmm. I always felt like 
Gotti always had those like street gritty records that like the streets grabbed, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But as far as that radio one, like that was the first one where I felt like, damn, like Yo Gotti really on the radio. And it was a Pilo beat, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. that was a whole sound, sound for him and everything. Like, yeah, because I think, you know, for, 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 for Bruh, um, he had the streets like on fire. Facts. Um, I think he probably was like the next one out of like your Jeezy, Gucci's, and all them who just didn't actually like because he had five star chick and mm-hmm. which he broke Nikki and all them. So I know he, he had his taste of success and and records, but I think when it came to like the global record, that's right when that whole West Coast sound was going crazy. You know, everybody was getting mustard beats. And, um, you know, being proud from the Bay, I'm telling him, like, nah, th- this is where the original sound come from. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> so when he did the record, he kind of, like, joking on the record when he said, I'm going, going back to back to the Bay because I played probably, like, 10 beats from another producer that just wasn't hidden. And it was kind of like, bro, you got one more song before we, like, take you, you know, go back. So, like, he, I think he might have he might have felt bad for me. Keep it G with you, like on the last beat I played, which was Pilo, and that's why he said I'm going, going back, back to the Bay, like as kind of like we about to send bro home, you know what I'm saying? And the A and R's and everybody in there was like this, shit. but he did say the Mac Dre line, rest in peace, Mac Dre, and um, cause I was always telling him the difference between L A and the Bay. I'm like, bro, we not the same, we not the same, right. and, you know. So I, I think Act Right might have gave him like his first taste of like success in California. And and since California is California, you know, we, we kind of dictate the masses. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he was able to get, like, y, YG got on the song. And before then, I think they thought YG was just tooted and booted. They didn't know YG was, like, YG. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and then, thank God, YG had my nigga come out, like, right around the same time. So, mm-hmm. it all kind of was like a layup for YG in the South and then for Gotti on the West Coast. That's dope. I, I know that the Bay really showed up and showed out on that video. That yeah, video yeah, was... Yeah. Now, he picked it. He was like, yeah, we're going to do it in Oakland. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, that's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, man, he went all around. We did, like... We we went rogue on a video shoot. Like, we was in just popping up in places. There was no permits and nothing like that. So, we uh, went to Vallejo, to the Crest. We was in the East. We was in the West. We was in downtown. We was all over the place with that video. Gotcha. How long you been with Yo Gotti, uh, CMG? So, Akrite came out in, what, 2014, 15, maybe? Wow. Probably about seven, eight years now. Okay. Yeah, seven, eight years. What's your position over there? I'm the head of A&R over at CMG. So, you know, me and Gotti work super close on his projects. Um, when we do like collective of CMG projects and then, um, you know, each artist got their own crew. So at the end of the day though, like I'm, I'm there to like help close all of the situations, but a lot of our artists got their own crews too. So, you know, those people do like a great job as well to where it make it easy for me. The lineup's probably one of the best in the industry. I'm sure. You would just tell me it's the best, and I I wouldn't argue yeah, with no, you. Yeah, we the champions right now. Champions, champions for champions. sure, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's the modern day G unit, modern day, you know, aftermath, like mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, might be the Warriors with KD right now, man. Yeah, yeah, we we, we yeah we were Warriors, we were Warriors with KD. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll take that. I'll take that. I'll sure. take that. Hell yeah! So. Yeah, so uh, Gotti dropped a new album, and uh, I think he have, might might have had one of the single best promotional schemes aimed towards independent artists ever with mm. the dollar for dollar. Okay. How how did that go? Um, so I don't think it was a promo scheme like that, but I no? understand why it could be seen as that. He was really just trying to show love, though, right? Yeah, because. Um, I don't know. See, Gotti might, we might go back and forth. I think Gotti got the idea for me in the studio. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because when I was on Motown, I did the Dreams Challenge where I left the song I had with him, Dej, and g open. I'm like, whoever rap best on it 
you know, I'll fly you to LA and do a, a chat. Uh, I'll let you do. Uh, I'll let you get a, a deal, not a deal, but like a, a a label visit. You know what I'm saying? To pitch your music and meet, see how this label stuff really go. Because people got this perception of like, mm -hmm. this what label meetings be like. And I'm like, nah, let's show people what it really was. So I did that in like 18. So we was in a studio with the dollar for dollar, and I said, bro, you should do this, and we should, like, reward the winners. Now, I don't know if he's going to give me credit for that, but it was really just us doing that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And um, it kind of took its own legs and ran and ran and ran its course. And um, he came up with the idea, like, you know what? I'm going to get a song to the people and let them, like, have a free feature for me. And you know, Gotti is maybe he he a marketing genius to me. So maybe he did he had it planned the whole time. But um, yeah, no, nah, I think it, it, it panned out. You know what I'm saying? A uh, uh, artist named Ten Percent won the challenge, and um, like he officially rocked with CMG now. And he mm -hmm. dope. He got a new song called Dior Funeral that just came out. Like I play that shit every day. Um, and we found a lot of people. You know, he found a girl from college. He I think he taking care of her tuition. Um, paying for some videos for some other people. He found some people in jail that he put some money on their books. Like, yeah, now nah, it, 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 I think it turned out bigger than any of us even expected. Hmm. Uh, I found myself in Memphis a few times mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. Uh, what's it like being a big boy in Memphis? I mean, are you <laughs> out there? I, I would imagine you're out there a lot. You know what? Like, I'm actually probably only out there twice a year. Oh, okay. And I think one is like, whatever, we just ain't Memphis at that time, going somewhere else, but that's the pit stop. And then I do Gotti birthday bashes, which is like considered maybe summer jams in Memphis. Oh, wow. So I'm really only out there twice a year, keeping G with you. Gotcha. Um, but I'm around them dudes a mm -hmm. lot, so I kind of know like what Memphis is like. I know like, what side is like this? What side is like that? Mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. Um, it's cool though. Like Memphis almost remind me of like they could be our cousins. We could be cousins with Memphis because yeah, they sure. big on um the player shit, the mm -hmm. pimping shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They they big on like they got their own language. Um, musically, it's kind of still kind of like the same influences. Um. But Memphis good, you know what I'm saying? We yeah. eat good out there. Food awesome. Yeah, yeah, The barbecue yeah, yeah. and the dry rubs and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, nah, they, they a different type of uh, cooking out there. But For sure. I usually be eating at Gotti restaurant, Privé. I haven't been there yet. Yeah, yeah, like. But now that we talked about it, I'll be there next. <laughs> I stick with the home team. Like, yeah. Yeah. I trust them. I, I eat their food, you know what I'm saying? My mom kill that shit all the time, so I really rock with them. Facts. Uh, so I saw a huge announcement for the West Coast. Uh, coming from CMG in the last month or so, yeah. with the signing of uh, Mozzie. Yeah. Uh, and I think I saw you in the video. Yeah. So you you, you had something to do with it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm the A and R over there, so you That's know. Huge. And, and, and Mozzie being from Northern California, and uh, you know, sack, but he accepted in the Bay Area. Like, I've been rocking with Mozzie, and, and people don't know this, but I've been putting Mozzie with Gotti, just like in the studio, he want to have a conversation, he want to like, you know, Mozzie want to learn a lot on his own, he's his own boss too, so Thanks. he had some questions, he always wanted to know how to do certain things, um, you know, and I did a project with Mozzie and Black Youngster early, together, like a joint project. I always thought that was through Epic. Nah, that was just me fucking putting some shit on the internet, <laughs> wow. um, so... You know, we've been like that, and then when Gotti did Summer Jam a while back, mm -hmm. like we had, I had him bring out Mozzie. So, Mozzie and me, that's my homie. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I, if I could, I would have signed Mozzie the first time I met him. Um, but, you know, he had his own journey, and he was setting up his own team, him and Davo, and, exactly. you know, he Mozzie and all of them. He was setting up his own brand to where he could be his own boss as well. So, you know, when the time was allowed, you know what I'm saying? Like, I knew he was out there. You know what I'm saying? Taking a couple of meetings and, and I just reached out. And I'm like, let's, you know, let's get you in front of bro one more time on this level. And, you know, the numbers made sense. The, the the music made sense. And, like, one thing about CMG is, like, it's it's what our team feel about you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Gotti could like you. I could like you. But, like, 
you got to kind of be around the team for like maybe mm-hmm. 60 to 90 days before you get to come over. And Mozzie shit was instant because everybody knew him already. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was like, it's just like your homie just coming up rock with your team now. You know what I'm saying? So, nah, it was big. Mozzie on the CMG and new album coming out and he going to be on a few other little surprises. And You know what I'm saying? So, being that he is signed to CMG, the one thing that I've always wondered is, is he going to sign to a major? With CMG being an independent, I'm assuming that they are under a major label. Are they? It's CMG Inter- Interscope. Interscope. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's big. Interscope. So basically, yeah, he's got that Interscope behind the whole label. So this he will be... Machine. Yeah. He got the, the, the music machine and the street machine behind him now, so... He already was like the number one West Coast artist on his own. So, For sure. you know, all we could do is, is, is magnify it and, and keep it going bigger and bigger for him. Top 40 records and stuff like that. I mean, we still going to keep him Mozzie, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But, like, we just going to probably, like, spread his wings a little bit more and, you know, help the South and the East recognize who he is because he already the big dog on this side with Facts. us. Yeah. Tight. So, I saw that... Uh, you had gotten your Def Jam jacket. Yeah. So that that normally says that you are a signed <laughs> artist to Def Jam. Uh huh. Wow! Congratulations. No, I appreciate. I mean, that's it. a huge hallmark thing. Like to get to Def Jam, is like I don't know. I mean, that's that's the founding label of what? Uh, what's his name? Who founded Rec- uh, Russell Simmons? Russell Simmons, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's you can't go any higher than that in the hip hop genre. Uh. How many DJs have been signed to, to Def Jam? I was thinking about that as you were coming here. I was thinking, like, there couldn't be that many DJs that were signed to Def Jam. I think definitely Khaled. Khaled was, like, that might be probably it. the biggest. Right. Um, I'm not sure before that. But right. I'm sure people might have did little situations, but Khaled is definitely the biggest right. to do it over there, at, 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 when he was over there. How does it feel to be a DJ at Def Jam? Nah, I feel good, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, you know, I think, like I just said, Khaled, like, cemented the DJ slash artist thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? To where, like, you actually look at Khaled as an artist before you call him a DJ now. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. So, like, he set that bar up for me. So, you know, it's, it's an honor to be over there. Like I say, Def Jam is, like, legendary in the hip-hop game and in the music game. Yeah. Um, in the streets as well. And um, you know, the the new CEO, you know, Tunji, he he from the West Coast. He from the Bay Area actually. Hmm. So, you know, I'm I'm we all kinda started at the same time over there at Def Jam. And um So Tunji's the CEO. Yeah, he's the CEO of Def Jam. Or president or however you put it, right? No, nah, he's CEO. CEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Bay Area is literally in the building right now. Yeah, yeah. So it feel good me and him on this journey of like, you know, at the end of the day we still fulfilling like the music as a whole. Mm-hmm. But you know, we definitely come from here. So mm-hmm. you know, running plays with your hometown team, home team is like it's, 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 we got to make something happen, and I think you know I'm the first from the crib under his tutelage. What is it, tutelage? Tutelage, yeah. So you know I got to make him look right, and he got to make me look right. So it, it's a it's a play for both of us. Got gotcha. you. Right. So let's talk the new record, man. You yeah. got that big record out. Yes, sir. Uh, what's it called again? Rick Ross, E S T G. It's called Feelings. Feelings. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and that's your first record out of Def Jam? Yeah, I came out the gate with that. Yeah, video and all. Like, cause I, 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 I think one thing that kind of like messes people up is they miss their moments. And I learned this from Gotti and CMG is like, you should like, everything should just go. Once you're ready to go, like, I can't say, all right, hold on, y'all. I'm about to go work. I'm about to go figure this out. Like, so when we did the announcement, I was like, I gotta have a video ready. I gotta have a single ready. And, um, you know, but yeah, that's my first record over there. We came out the gate strong. Just to set the bar for what we about to keep doing. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Got an album coming? Yeah, oh. man. I'm working on something. Is it, is it, is it under wraps, right? Yeah. It's under wraps. <laughs> nah, nah. You know what? The album definitely coming, though, before this year. Um, okay. It's damn near done. It's a mixture of home and, 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 and uh, our A-list artists in the world. 
And uh, I'm probably like maybe two features away from being done. Huge. Yeah. How many songs? So we probably gonna have like range, like you know, you don't have to. Uh, so total tracks is gonna be about sixteen, right? Wow. But technically, sixteen or seventeen, but technically two of those tracks is like intros in mm-hmm. in um in the outro. Gotcha. So one is from Khaled and one is from uh, DJ Drama. So technically, it's either going to be 14 or 15 songs with 17 or 16 tracks. That's huge. Yeah, you know, we got to make it. I think you might have even highlighted, like, the other DJ that probably had something with Def Jam. So it sounds My like it's... Drama was on Atlantic. He was on Atlantic, mm-hmm. that's right. I think he was an A&R, right? Isn't he an A&R at Atlantic or something like yeah, that? Yeah, but he got his whole label, too. You know, right. Jack Harlow and yeah. Lil Uzi and all that. I didn't know he had a label. Yeah, yeah, no, drama. I mean, you know, drama and Khaled is really the foundation of my shit anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, drama represented the streets with the mixtapes and, like, the next street artist to blow. And then Khaled, like, put the the polish on everything and made, like, hit records. So my project is a combination of both of those two. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, being that you've been, like, what, you, what are some of the big records that uh, you A&R, just so like the public knows? Because I, I feel like behind the scenes, a lot of times the A&Rs, we don't really get credit. I mean, we'll get it through like that plaque. That plaque talk a lot of shit. But sometimes, man, we don't even know how many like have came in, man. Like, So what are some of the records you worked on? I mean, I, I think Ackwright probably went gold or platinum, right? Ackwright went gold, my first record. Um uh... Help put together law with with Gotti and E40. That went gold. Um, then I did a like I think I did maybe the intro and a couple songs on the second album. But I did a I'm trying to think of all this Gotti shit we did. Lil Baby and Gotti put a date on it. That was originally my beat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that Gotti heard it was like I need that. Um, rake it up. You know what I'm saying? Like I threw the. Uh, they already had the record. I threw in the two short bitches in the song. Um, because I was like, that's short. You know what I'm saying? That's short song that y'all flip. Like, so I actually took the bitches off a song I had with two short and put it in that song. Um, what else we got? I just posted my plaques the other day. So many other shit. But a lot of that, then I just executive produced this whole last double disc album, the CM10 shit. Yeah. So we was able to get tracks of me, and I was like, I got tracks of me in last two beats. Wow. Yeah. So one is um, one is with that one, the one with Gotti. Um, then I got one on my project with two artists. It's like big dogs, though. You know what I'm saying? So, and I was able to get Reese beats on there. I was able to get Link up on there. Like we wow. were able to, yeah, you know, mix some of our barrier people in there. So I did that whole project. Um, I helped Days Love try me get broken. I think I might have been the first to actually, I'm not the mic. I was the first person to grab their record. You know what I'm saying? And, and turn I broke her. Up. I mean, that was her record. Yeah, the Bay turned Days all the way up first. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, people thought Big Days was from Oakland. Yeah. Because nobody yeah. like identified, like nobody knew. She was from Detroit. She was from Detroit the whole time. Detroit didn't even really yeah. know Days like that. You huh. know what I'm saying? Like, she was just like, a, you know, she was trying to make her way out there. So yeah. some people knew her, some people didn't. But Oakland definitely was her first show, first everything. Um, I was a part of Kamaya, How Does It Feel, when she first started. Well, she wasn't when she first started because she was actually the baby girl before all that with DB and D-Lo and all of them. And I guess I caught her when I think she might have was about to give up the music game. So... Um, she already had all that music, though. I just put it out there. Um, and then, of course, CMG shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I done did records with Bag. I done, uh, co-produced Full 2 Doug Maybach with him in Future. That's tight. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm help A&R in a few things. We made sure the 5,500 degrees was, you know, what it is. And, you know, Manny Fresh is like my big brother. So wow. when it was time to clear that. You know, I got to call my big bro, Manny. So, Manny and Juvie, my big bro. So, I'm I'm sprinkled around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. <laughs> Manny Fresh, man. That's 
Yeah. One of my favorite producers for yeah, sure. He's my all time favorite producer. Yeah. Man, Fresh. yeah, he's yeah. definitely top three. Like, God. Yeah, yeah, I'm putting man against anything. So, yeah, do you have any artists? Uh, right now, I got a female artist, um, rap artist by the name of Paris Knight. She's from Oakland. Um, I think she going to be next. I think she rap better than anybody. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say male or female. Like She rap better than everybody. Um, so she got some shit coming up. She on my album like three times, two or three times. Um, I just signed a young R&B girl. She on my album with a song, with 4 2 Doug. Um, we gonna announce her soon. And um, it's really just us three right now. And I, I got somebody else from the crib. We just making sure it's right. But it's gonna like make sure the crib, we good. Yeah. Oakland Bay Area, we gonna be good. That's tight. <laughs> Where do people find you? Find me on everything at uh, the boy Dane, D A B O Y D A M E. You know, everybody be typing T H E, but it's really D A. Little flair, little little razzle to it. Do you have any last words, shout outs, any type of business you want to shout out? Yeah, man. You know, shout out to Oakland. Shout out to the whole Bay Area. You know, I'm just here to make us look right, make us look presentable. Here to for us to claim back our coolness in this music game. Um, shout out to the whole team. Don't play too much CMG. Shout out to Gotti. Shout out to Mozzie. Um, you know, the whole team. Money Bag, ESCG, Photo, the Black Youngster, everybody, Block Boy. Um, and just shout out to the whole Bay Area, man. Like I said, we, we about to get this shit back right. Um, my new single is Fillings with ESCG and Rick Ross. Def Jam is in the building. Def Jam is in Oakland. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, man, just keep on a, keep looking out for some shit and make sure y'all support it. You know what I'm saying? I tell people, we even need the suckers to support this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's all, it's going to open up a window for y'all to get cracking too. So support this shit because it's actually good. There's no reason not to support this shit. You know what I'm saying? If, if the name said DJ Khaled, you would fucking play it. So, you know what I'm saying? We bring y'all the exact same standard and quality. So, you know what I'm saying? Fuck with us, man. Play too much CMG, Def Jam.